I'm back playing with this little white Jeep again. Now, uh, last time I was completely done with it. I took it out for a drive, everything went fine. I just had a little bit of vapor lock, which I consider kind of normal these days with these ethanol fuels. Um, the boiling point is way down. I heard it could be as low as 100 degrees, which is ambient here a lot of times. Um, obviously they probably blend it different here, but anyway, um, I just figured it was something normal. But a lot of you guys offered suggestions to fix it, so I figured maybe I should fix it. So today we're going to figure out how to fix it. Now the first thing to do is figure out what the actual problem is. Now vapor lock is caused by fuel boiling somewhere, creating vapor pressure and keeping fuel from flowing. Um, I don't know where it's boiling. I'm suspicious of the fuel pump, but it could be in the carburetor. And uh, also the pressure that it's under, uh, if it's under too low a pressure, it boils easier. Higher pressure boils higher, just like a radiator. So there's really three things I've got to check. I'm gonna to need to check the fuel pressure just to see where we're at. And then there's two spots I'm suspicious of, the carb and the fuel pump as potential hot spots. So let me show you my setup. I've added a gauge in line for pressure so I can actually see what it is. And then I've got these digital thermometers with a thermocouple end. I'm gonna put that end on some foam to insulate it from outside air and stick it on potential hot spots like uh, this fuel pump. On, we'll have a reading of the temperatures at the fuel pump. I also attached another one to the side of the carburetor here so we have another reading. So that way we can monitor both of those temperatures simultaneously. I'll check the fuel pressure every once in a while. I did already start it. We're supposed to have two and a half PSI. Right now it is reading almost two. It was fluctuating around two, two and a half. So it's on the low side, but it's pretty close to what it should be. So we'll monitor that as we go and see if it goes up, down, or what happens. I just started up. I'm getting some wild readings on these gauges. I'm not sure. I think I'm getting some stray interference somewhere, which is odd. But um, we'll, we'll try to work with it. That one seems a lot more stable. Interesting. Fuel pressure hovering right around two, two and a half. So basically it's at or below minimum. So the fuel pressure is low. I've got it warming up here. I'm gonna reroute those gauges to somewhere I can see when I drive because we gotta get this thing hot. I let this idle for a while until it thoroughly heated up. Let's check the temperatures. The fuel pump, it's bouncing, but it's showing over 110 degrees, 112. The carburetor, 85. Basically, the fuel pump is a lot hotter than the carburetor at this point. Now let's check the fuel pressure. Huh. Well, that's not good. Now I'm going to shut it down, let the heat from the engine soak into those components, see what the temperature ends up being after about 10 minutes or so. It's set for probably 15 minutes or so. The fuel pump is about the same temperature as before. The carburetor went way up in temperature. Now it's above the fuel pump. So having the motor running seems to cool down the carburetor. The complete lack of fuel pressure when it's warm concerns me because um, it should have some. So I'm almost thinking I should fix that first and then go on to other options. Now this is my old fuel pump. I put this in when I put the motor in because when I bought the motor it didn't have a fuel pump. This was the cheapest one Rock Auto sells. So I'm hoping this is a problem. I went ahead and bought a more factory style replacement. This is the kind of the glass bowl on it, so if nothing else, we'll be able to see what's happening. The bottom part looks almost identical to that one. I don't see any visual differences really, but um, we're gonna put this on and find out what happens. Now, I did do about 10 minutes of research into this, and um, I found that there's some spacers, and there's two different spacers, depending on the motor possibly, uh, that can go between this fuel pump and the block. Now this motor came with no spacers, I've never had any on there, and um, apparently the spacers just reduce the pressure, not increase it. So either way, I wouldn't put them on if I had them, and I don't have them. So we're just bolting this straight on and going to see what happens. Just got to steal the fittings from that, put it on this, and throw it in. The new fuel pump's in. I have, the lines have all been drained, so this is a complete fresh start. The two things to look at are that fuel bowl there, hopefully you can see it, and that filter there. We're going to see what it takes to get fuel to pump through those. Ah! Nothing. 
nothing in the glass bowl yet. Oh, I'm seeing fuel pump up. There we go. We got fuel moving. The pressure looks pretty good. It's not fluctuating like the other pump and uh, it's holding right at two and a half. So that looks good. We'll see what happens when it gets uh, hot. Well, I'm slogging through sand here. I'm gonna try a few hills because so far it hasn't heated up a whole lot. Uh, let's check our temperatures. Carburetor 91, fuel pump about 115. There's level, so. We've got some pretty good hills we're climbing. Pressure is reading zero again. Well, that's interesting. Clearly, there's got to be fuel going to the motor because um, it's running. But uh, that zero fuel pressure sort of concerns me. But uh, let's keep driving and see what happens. This is actually a pretty good hill. Because with open differentials, those spaced out dips really uh, cross you up here. That hill was good enough to get this pretty warm. Running, I was over 135 on this uh, fuel pump, only 100 on the carb. So definitely warmer on the fuel pump. Still saying zero. I'm showing zero PSI, but obviously fuel is still running to the carburetor because it's still running. Um, and I noticed the fuel pump is significantly higher than the carburetor. So if we have a problem, it's in the fuel pump area. And that's the thing we got to keep cool. Well, here's something I didn't expect. This had zero fuel pressure when I shut it off. It's got pressure now. After sitting, not running, not pumping fuel. Interesting. I thought maybe it was because the you know heat soak from the motor got everything hotter. Check the temperatures. We're running under 100 on the fuel pump, right a little over 100 on the uh, little over 100 on the carburetor. So the temperatures are lower than when I shut off the motor. So in theory, as it cools down, it should have less pressure. But for some reason, it has more. Not sure what that means, but it's interesting. Now it looks like we really aren't fixing the fuel pump problem. We still have zero pressure when it's hot. I'm going to move on to other ideas. Now, um, one idea I was given was if the carburetor is getting hot, use some kind of non-metallic spacer to try to keep the heat away from it. But when we check the temperatures, the carb was significantly cooler than the fuel pump. Uh, after that long hill, I was running over 130 degrees on the fuel pump, right around 100 on the carburetor. So I think the fuel pump is the issue. Now an idea I was given for that one 
was to use fuel to cool the fuel pump. Now in this system, the fuel goes through the pump up to the carburetor, and uh, if the carburetor float shuts off, that, pump, that fuel isn't flowing. Now, this, this is the part that should correct that problem. But this is the inline fuel filter with an outlet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna replace the fuel filter with this one, and then run this outlet back to the tank so that way fuel is constantly circulating around and it should stay cooler, particularly in the pump when it's going through there. Now, I'm a little leery of doing this because if it gets zero pressure when it's hot, I don't think adding more flow is gonna help the pressure go up. But I'm gonna try it, see what happens. But because I'm worried about having too much flow and reducing the pressure from the already low point it's at, I'm gonna add a valve on this return. So if I need to, I can shut it off and run it dead uh, into the, the um, carburetor. So that way, I'll try it with the fuel flowing. If it doesn't work, I can shut it down, maybe restrict it some, and that will uh, let me have the right amount of fuel balancing pressure and flow, hopefully, in theory. Let's see how it works. I finished this up last night, but I ran out of daylight to actually film it, so you guys couldn't see anything anyway. So very it's a good excuse to do another day driving around off-road. Uh, what I have here is a return line with a old valve I found in my parts bin and um, Right now it's shut off the motors running. I Open this up And you can get quite a bit of fuel That'll actually flow quite a bit the uh, The amount of circulation we get and the cooling effects should be pretty good at this point However, this also drops the pressure down quite a bit. I was down around one one and a half psi when I leave this wide open. So I'm gonna try restricting it to something around, let's say something like that. So fuel is still moving at all times, but hopefully it'll keep the pressure up enough to be uh, run the same as it did before. Now obviously I'm just running this into the filler neck here, and um, we're just gonna drop that in there. Clearly driving around, this could be an issue. So for safety's sake, we're going to add a wick, and that way we can uh, be sure to have no problems. Perfect. Now the sand was a little looser today, so I really had to work that to go up that hill. Uh, I was in low range, second gear, wide open in order to make it up. So that was a lot harder than I worked it yesterday. I actually pulled the hill in first gear eventually. So uh, that added more heat to the motor. Even so, the highest I saw that temperature gauge on the fuel pump go up to was 125. And uh, it's still sitting about the same temperature now. Um, 104 on the carburetor. So that means yesterday I saw 135 on there, means we have a 10 degree drop by running the fuel out into the tank. And uh, 
that's significant. Um, when we're talking very close to the vapor point, that is enough to uh, potentially do it, because it only happened every once in a while before. Now, the other thing I think might help is because a fuel pump can pump through the return, it's not going to build up the uh, against the float, so it's not going to have vapor locked in the line. In theory, it should be able to pump the vapor out and back through the return line if it does get any. So uh, I think we have a solution here. Um, I'll try it again in the summer. Right now it's a balmy 70 degree December day, but when it's 100 something degrees, we'll really know for sure. But as of right now, we've definitely made significant improvements, and seeing it wasn't that bad before, I think we may have this one licked. So, till next time, keep having fun. And I'm going to keep doing some uh, testing out here, because this is fun.